What's your emotional temperature? Don't say what it is, but I mean, we're going to... How many know that uh, uh, your emotions are vitally important to us, number one? Number two, people don't realize this, but your emotions were given by God. Your emotions, even anger... I know some people say, yes, I've used my anger against my spouse for 20 years. No, that's not really why he gave you uh, anger. But you have anger to be mad at what the devil is doing and what he has done. And so that's you should take their anger out on him, not on people. Amen. 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 I'm excited about this series. And uh, are you doing the 40-day challenge that's been online? You can do that. Make sure you keep up with that. But uh, before we begin today, let's welcome everybody who's watching online. We want to welcome everybody who's watching online. Amen. We have actually a large audience that watches online. There's actually more people watch online that physically come here. No, you're not allowed to stay home. You keep coming. But anyway, but uh, we want to uh, welcome everybody and thank you for being here. Emotions. It's vitally important. We started this series last week, but EQ is actually more important than your IQ. EQ is more important than your IQ because your EQ, it will help you in every relationship that you have. It will help you in your job. It will help you in just being happy with yourself. A lot of people are just not even happy with themselves. And if you get uh, your emotions in check, God wants you to be happy with yourself. I mean, if you can't be happy with yourself, you're not going to be happy with anybody else. Amen. You will not. What is emotional intelligence? Well, psychologists describe emotional intelligence or emotional quotient, which is EQ, as consisting of the following. The ability to face challenges by being aware of one's own self. Self-awareness. Most people don't even know what's going on on the inside of them. They have no idea about self-awareness. But if you have a higher EQ, you will know what's going on on the inside of you. That's a big step. The ability to find positive ways of dealing with stressful situations. Everybody's got stressful situations going on in your life, but we have the ability to deal with them in a positive way. Communicating effectively and politely. Everybody can communicate, but can you communicate politely with others? Empathy, empa, I said it. Empathy is vitally important, and we'll talk to you about that, but willingness to form healthier relationships by working closely with people and the ability to use all these qualities to achieve success and work in your life. And there's very little emphasis put on emotional intelligence. Just starting in the 90s, they started giving testing, started educating people, and realized that there is such a thing as EQ and how important it is. And so I'm really excited about this series because it's going to help us as a church family. It's going to help people who are watching online in their relationships. It's going to help you get better promotions in your job. Uh, But I read an article by Thomas Chamario. He says this. It is remarkable how many smart, highly motivated, and apparently responsible people rarely pause to contemplate their own behaviors. We may not have a very accurate of an idea of how smart we are, but our notion of how nice we are is even less accurate. <laughs> the main reason for this blind spot I just wanted everybody to contemplate a little bit. That's why I stopped. I knew what to say. But the main reason for this blind spot is wishful thinking, overconfidence. It is well documented, but rarely discussed fact that in any domain of competence, most people think they are better than they actually are. Most people think they are nicer than they actually are. I think that way. I think, man, I am the nicest guy that you would ever want to meet. And then reality happens, and my wife may disagree with me about something, and the niceness just kind of (laughs) drains. But I'm telling you, we have the ability 
to manage and even control our emotions. If you don't get, this is the first step for this to help you. I'm telling you, this is helping me. But if we are going, it's going to be a step-by-step process in this series that we're going to be talking about. So you don't want to miss any of it. And, uh, but the first thing, it's just a myth or even a lie that uh, you can't control your emotions. The majority of people think that you can't. Maybe you were one of them. I just can't help myself. I can't control my emotions. I just can't. I, they're just out of control. Well, it's a lie. But if you believe that, guess what? They will be out of control, and you won't be able to control them. But unless we learn to manage our emotions, we're going to be constantly battling feelings of, of depression, and gloom, and doom, and despair. But if you can get a hold of your emotions, that will be part of your past and not part of your present or future. God, God does not want us to live in doom, despair, agony on me. Corporations are now having EQ tests for their employees. I mean, most people think, well, I just need to be educated. And trust me, we're not belittling education. We're not, you younger people, we're not saying, oh, I'm just going to quit college. No, we're not saying that at all. But what we are saying is, with your IQ learning, you better have some EQ learning as well. Your IQ can get you the position. Your EQ will help you keep the position. It will. So corporations are now doing EQ tests. For example, one insurance company discovered that EQ could play a vital role in sales success. Sales agents who ranked lower on the emotional intelligence abilities such as empathy, initiative, self-confidence were found to sell policies with an average premium of $54,000. And so they tested these one, some of the people that had a higher EQ and so as a comparison, those people who had a higher EQ sold policies worth an average of $114,000, double. So what do you think uh, the sales corporation is doing? They're trying to raise everybody's EQ. Why? It just helps out the whole business. It helps out the whole corporation. So empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. The thing is about empathy, you know, a lot of people, let's just be honest, all of us, there's times that we don't have empathy towards people. You know, it's like you made your bed and I lie in it. You know, you hear things like that. Do you all hear, hear things like that? Okay, I just, I thought I was the only one. But, I mean, people, they think that, well, you did that, so you just have to live with it. You know, that's not empathy. Do you realize Jesus was the portrait of empathy? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When somebody was hurting, he would go and meet their need or help them out. When Jesus was on the cross, that was a picture of the greatest empathy. When he was on the cross and these people who nailed him to the cross now are, were ridiculing him, making fun of him, telling him, if you are the son of God, why don't you come off the cross? If you're the son of God, why don't you come off the cross? Do something. Do something. Most of us, if we were Jesus, we would have jumped off the cross, slapped the snot out of him, jumped back on and say, now you were sin? Okay, maybe it was just me, but I mean, some people would do that. But Jesus sit there and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. That is the ultimate picture of empathy. He had such compassion for ones who were hurting him. But listen to me. What they were doing, he did not affect how he was feeling. We have that in us. We have the ultimate empathy within each and every one of us. Jesus Christ himself is in us, and he brought the package of empathy with him. Why is that so important? Because you and I, we know that, man, people mistreat us. Let me just make sure I'm talking to the right audience. Is, is anybody not been mistreated? In, <laughs> we could go to the nursery, and after age one, that you, they would even say they've been mistreated. That kid took my bottle. You know, some, it's just part of life, is it not? It is. 
But we have victory. God didn't say, yeah, I know, it's, it's hell on earth. I'm just sorry. We'll just try to get by as best as you can. No, he didn't say that. He did not say that. He said empathy and self-control is in each and every one of you. Why is that so good? Because when you are mistreated, and you will be, maybe even in church, If you're looking for the perfect church, I'm sorry, this is not it. Good luck, I'm finding that. But this is the point, I'm not trying to make excuses, but I am saying reality is there's going to be times you and I are mistreated. Is that right? There's going to be times when things don't go the way that you want them to go. Your expectation of how you should be treated is wrong. And so, but this is what Jesus is saying. Even though when people mistreat you, listen to me, you have the ability to not allow that to affect how you feel. And this is even a higher realm. Even concerning the one who actually mistreated you, you have the ability to still feel good toward them. That just makes your brain go tilt. You go, what? You have, listen to me. You have the ability to think good things towards those who miss and abuse you. That is such a free. That will set you 100% free because guess what? Now, no matter how you're treated, they will not dominate how you feel. How many have heard my illustration about... uh, uh, you, God has empowered you. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you a power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Nothing shall by any means harm you. So if you and I are being harmed, you need to take a good look on the inside. Because even though you're being mistreated, people don't like, you know, we have those days. But God showed me a picture of me having all of this armor on and all these weapons, you know, an AK-47, a, a rocket launcher, and, and those bullets all out. I mean, I'm just a walking military, just me. God just put all this military armor and all these weapons, massive weapons, things I don't know because I was in the Air Force, you know. We, we didn't shoot. We flew. But anyway, uh, so I, I, I had all of this stuff, but I just knew like, whoa, this is just power. And somebody knocked on the door. So I went and opened the door, and there was a, a guy there, and he said he had a mask over. He says he said, "I'm here to rob you." He had no weapon, not even a knife, nothing. He didn't have anything. But he said he's here to rob me, and he didn't have anything. I said, "Oh, you're here to rob me?" And I said, "Oh." And so I started taking off my weapons and giving them to him. Jesus said, "Listen to me. Every time that you get offended." That is the picture. He does not, nobody has the power to offend you. But you can give them the power to offend you. He says, I've given you the power to resist. I've given you the power to never be offended. But he says, that picture of you giving the weapons to them to harm you and shoot you, now that's what's going on when you get offended. You just gave them the weapon. Ow. Or hallelujah, one of the two. That'll help you. I know it helped me. It helped me. So the Nobel Prize winning psychologist, Daniel Kamen, has found that people would rather deal with a person that they trust and like rather than someone they do not, even if that means paying more for an inferior product. They did test on hundreds of people, and that's what they came to the conclusion. And that's true. That is so true. I mean, you have a great salesman who loves you, who likes you, who wants you to, uh, to just understand this product, and, and you'll buy it, even though it's a piece of junk. You go, well, thank you. And you feel walking out blessed and happy because... They liked you so much. Well, in the article, they asked this question. Can EQ be taught or strengthened? The answer is yes, it can. But in all all the articles and the books that I've read about EQ, they don't bring God into the picture. That's where you and I have an advantage. 
We have an advantage because we're going to rely and trust upon God. And during this series, we're going to learn so much about EQ, about our emotions. I'm telling you, you're, it's going to cause you to be a happier person, to be a better spouse, and a better employee. I mean, think that's a good relevant thing. You know, people says, I wish they would teach things relevant in the church. You can't get more relevant than this. It even help you in school. Your professors will like you. And you will like your professors. Amen. John chapter 14, verse 1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. So the number one thing is you have to realize, and we've said this, is that you do have a choice about your emotions. You can control your emotions. You can. And most people don't realize that. So that is the first step in just realizing I can control myself. I can control myself. It's vitally important. I remember back when I was in Louisville, Kentucky, I was in charge of the aircraft operation, and uh, we started at 4 a.m., started unloading the aircraft about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. And I did that so many times I could do it blindfolded. It was just easy. But this particular time in my life, there was something majorly going on, and my emotions were out of control. Now, I didn't know what I know now, obviously. I was in my early 20s, mid-20s. And so um, there was a loader that pulled up to the 727, and I was on it, and there was a young lady who was controlling it, and she kind of brought it in crooked. I was not, my mind was totally on my emotions. I was emotionally a mess. I mean, emotional mess. And uh, so she said, hey, Micah, is it kind of crooked? Is it okay to take it up? And I said, what? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, she took that thing up. She hit the plane. Put a little bitty one to two inch rip in the plane. And she, everybody screamed at me. And then I went, oh, my and her first words out of her mouth, I thought you said it was okay. And I said, I did. So we took it down. I went and got the pilots. That's never a good thing to tell a pilot that we put a hole in your aircraft. So he came out there, and we took him up, and he looked at it. And he, oh, man, he, then he went inside, and we had to call everybody but the president of the United States. And... Uh, so they had people come out, inspect it and everything. And to make a long story short, he could still fly, which I thought, oh, thank God. Because if that plane got grounded, I knew I was fired. And I could even be fired even then. So my boss was not there in the morning. He, come in, he came in at 8 o'clock. So when he found out, he, I mean, he, his boss over him, I mean, it was boss after boss after boss. Okay, we're going to have a meeting. And it's about you, Mike. So they came to the conclusion that they're going to need a week to discuss if I was going to still have a job. And so they let me off for a week <coughs> without pay. And um, so I was now my emotions were turned a different way. My emotional mess now is an emotional mess that just and this is what happens. Your emotional mess, it, it, it's like a snowball. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and things get worse, and things get worse. And, you, and it just, it's, it wasn't a good hair day for me. You understand? So uh, I went home, and I thought, oh, my goodness, man, because my life was my job, my career. I was going up in the company, and my goal was to be, I was going to be a senior manager of a FedEx or uh, station. And so that was my goal. And and uh, I wasn't too far from that. I only had two more steps to be able to do that. And now I don't have just a black mark against me. I've got a horrible mark against me and that I could be fired. And so after a week, they called me in. They said, well, Mike, you know, I was able, to be honest with you, I talked to, to the upper echelon to, to say he's worth keeping and not fire. And so you still have a job. I'm telling you that story for this reason. My emotions almost caused me to lose my job. It wasn't a lack of intelligence. It wasn't a lack of knowledge. It was a lack of the ability to control and manage my emotions. almost lost my job because of that. That's going around the world today. People are losing their marriage, losing their job, losing their friends, long life friends. And now it's over because your emotions got out of control. You don't think this is important? Come on now. 
It's vitally important. So God says, don't let your heart be troubled so you have control. But then he goes and says another thing. Trust in God, trust also in me. You got to have faith that God's going to help you. Most people, including myself, you know, when I would lose my cool, when I, you, I know this is hard for y'all to believe because I'm so kind and considerate and compassionate. <laughs> Somebody told a joke for those who are listening online. That's why they're laughing. But uh, my nickname in school, before high school, middle school, because even before I got to high school, was Mad Dog. Mad Dog Davis. And I'll tell you, you know why? Because I was the smallest kid in school, so I just thought if I'm going to survive, I'm going to have to be the meanest kid in school. I succeeded. So uh, I was just somebody, and it protected me so many times because somebody bigger than me was going to beat me up. Well, I just act like foaming at the mouth, and it scared them. And they could have killed me, but, you know, but I, when you act crazy, people get scared of crazy people. So Mad Dog Davis came to the rescue, and I, I lived, I survived. But my emotions were out of control, temper and all. I know, it's hard to believe. Thank God I got saved and believe in Jesus. But anyway, uh, the part about being, you know that you can control, the second part is most people, and back then even I thought, I need to work and discipline myself. That will only take you so far. Most people will say, well, you need to work harder. People may be watching online, you've got a temper. You, I just have to control this harder. I've just got to try harder. You will fail. You will fail. Self-discipline will take you only so far. But God is not telling you and me, listen to me now, this is good news. God is not saying, try harder. Work harder. He's not saying that to you and me. He's saying, trust me. Trust me to help you, Mike Davis. Trust me. You make the right choice, but trust me. Have faith in me that I can help you. Most people don't look to God for help. They just, oh, I got to read more. I got to study more. I got to do I, 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 I. And you will fail, 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 fail. And then guess what? You get worse, worse, worse. And then you just say, oh, I'm just a bad cat. No, nothing can help me now. And that's The devil's got you exactly where he wants you. Or you could just say, God, I can't do this. He says, I know. God, I'm doing a terrible job. God will say, I know. So, God, am I just hopeless? Do you think you're hopeless? I go, well, I have you. I can trust you. I can look to you. He says, I can work with that. Amen. God can work with your mess if you bring the, his, your mess to him. Are you hearing me? Most people don't do that. I said this in the first service. Do you know, David, if you read Psalms, he told God all of his problems, his issues, his sin. If he was weak in some area, you know, Lord, this enemy's attacking me. This, this person's doing this. Oh, God, help me. And he would pour out his heart. But do you know one area that he didn't talk to God about? His sexual lust problems. He never talked to God about that. You won't read that in Psalms. But we all know that David failed in that area. I mean, horribly. Because of his lust for another woman, it caused him to have premeditated murder. Wow. Because of this, I mean, it really caused him to be so in a predicament that he could have been, first of all, he could have been killed. Second of all, he could have lost his kingship, but none of that happened, we know. But I wonder if he would have talked to God about that if he would have had failure in that area. I dare say no, he would not have, but he never did. What is my point? You and I, we need to get real with God concerning our emotions. <clears throat> Testing. I'm sure the mic's having failure here, but... <laughs> You need to get real with God. We've all probably lost our cool. I'm, I know I'm supposing that, but we've all probably lost our cool. But then there's some people that they live that way. They just live day to day losing their cool. They can't find their keys. They lose their cool. 
If the alarm clock, electricity goes out, you wake up late, you lose your cool. I mean, everything, any small minor detail. We're believing for rain. You walk out and you don't have an umbrella and it's raining. You lose your cool instead of going, thank you, God, for the rain. I'll I will say this. Gratitude and complaining can never be in the same atmosphere. But anyway, it, this is not the way God wants you and I to live. It robs you of your joy. And we said last week, if you let your emotions control you like that, it robs you of your health. We haven't mentioned that today. But the it, emotions can rob you of your health. So this is vitally important, but God says, you do not have to live like this. You don't have to live out of control. You don't have to let your emotions totally control you. So I believe when he says, trust me, in 1 John 5, 4, it says, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If you want to have victory, you're going to have to have faith and believe that God will help you in the area of emotions. Are you hearing me? You just have to trust God. God, I'm, I'm really poor at this. I'm really poor in trying to get my emotions in control. But I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe that you not just will help me, but you're going to help me right now, today. Amen? There's grace for you. I totally believe that the, the grace of God is placed on the inside of you to have control over your emotions. The reason I believe that is because God went and said, hey, don't let your heart be troubled. Take control. I believe that's why David thought on the good, you know, David failed in many areas, but you know why he succeeded and was one of the greatest kings? When he was a young boy, when he killed Goliath, he thought on the goodness and the faithfulness of God, those two things. He knew that his father was good. There may have been a lot of people that didn't think God was good. David, he not only knew, but he experienced the goodness of God, and he knew and experienced the faithfulness of God. When the whole army of Israel were shaken in their boots in fear off to the sideline because some big dude with testosterone running out of his nose named Goliath was saying, I'm going to kill and destroy the whole army of Israel. Send somebody out to fight me. Nobody. Nobody. They were emotional wreck. Fear had grasped a hold of them. Paralyzes them. And did you know that's what the devil wants you and I to think? For your emotions and my emotions to paralyze you, to hijack you. That's why you read about in sto stories on the front page, this person went and shot and he did this or this person did that. What happened? Their emotions got hijacked. They probably didn't mean to do all that. Maybe they did. I don't know. But a lot of times, there's a lot of people in prison today because their emotions just got totally hijacked. They just, when it set, the dust settled, they didn't want that to happen. God wants you and I to know that your emotions should never be hijacked, number one. Never let your emotions get the best of you. Well, David, he understood about the goodness and the faithfulness of God. So when he heard Goliath spatting off, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, who is this man who doesn't have a covenant with God? We have a covenant with God. So this, this is nothingness that's spatting off at the mouth. It doesn't matter his, how big he is because the circumstance never matters how you respond. The circumstance should never matter how you respond or even cause you how to feel. <laughs> it's what's on the inside of you that David knew and realized. And he said, this guy is nothing. And he proved it by going out there and taking his head off his shoulders, and he won. John 14, 27 says this, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Now listen, he's saying, Jesus himself is saying, my peace. He's not saying the peace of the world. He says, not as the world gives do I give to you. The peace that the world gives is if, if your boss gives you a raise, you have peace. 
If your wife or your husband treats you extra special that day and wants to take you out, you have peace. If your kids behave, don't break anything. Don't spill anything. Don't make any mess. And most of the mothers right now are going, what world do you live in? But if that could happen, could, emphasis on could, you would have peace. That's the kind of world or the peace that the world knows. But Jesus says, no, I'm giving you my peace. And he goes into detail. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. The reason you don't have to let your heart be troubled is because he says, I have given you my peace. That's why you don't have to let the world give you trouble. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Something happens, you hear they're going to have layoffs at the, your job or just close down the company. You're, you know, fear can rise up within you. But he says, you have the ability to not be afraid. The doctor says, you know, you have stage four cancer. You have the ability not not be afraid. I didn't get too many amens on that, but it's true. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. I was pretty good until I read that, that part. How I many you know that it's easy to get agitated and disturbed? Agitated. I mean, things can agitate you. You know, you're at your house and some your next door neighbor is it's just boom, 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 boom. You know, there's a time for chupum, but you know, there, when you're at home, you're having a nice meal, you don't want to hear chupum, chupum, and your house is like, isn't it amazing when you go up to a signal light and your car's vibrating because that guy's, and, and you just look over and you go, really? I mean, I mean, how can you even hear and and be sane? But anyway, my, my point is this. I'm sorry, that was, that was out of character. But anyway, uh, <laughs> We let things agitate us, do we not? It says, stop allowing yourself to be agitated. Which means, listen to me, we all have the ability to do that. Amen. Did you know it's possible for you and I to live every day of our life agitated free? Most people go, I've got three little ones under the age of five, and you want me to feel agitated free? You watch them. No, I'm good, but anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just saying you have the ability. If you don't think you have the ability, you, it'll never happen. But if you start understanding and realize I have the ability that no one or no circumstance can make me feel agitated, In case you are wondering, this is good news. People are saying, you preach good news? That's all we preach here. We don't have bad news. You go home, turn on the television if you want that news. But if you want good news, you come to church. He says, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Wow. Wow. You come in, most people, you know, when they come in contact with somebody who's got a lot of money or is very powerful or is a high figure or is a movie star or somebody just big, you just feel a little intimidation. God says, why would you ever, why would you ever feel intimidated when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords lives on the inside of you? It's your thinking and your emphasis. John 16, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It really is. This is before Jesus was getting ready to leave. He got his disciples together and he said this. I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. Christians should be the most peaceful, most confident people on the planet. They should be. Should. Emphasis on should. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have trials, you're going to have distress, and you're going to have frustration. Most of y'all probably experienced that this morning. But be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, and undaunted. Now listen, he says on one side, you're going to have trials. You're going to have frustration. 
You're going to have tribulation. All of this, in other words, hell is going to be breaking loose on this side. But he says, on this side, I've given you peace. I've given you confidence. You have the ability to be undaunted. This is greater than this. No matter what this says, how big the circumstance, how bad it is, this is always going to be bigger, honey. It's always going to be more powerful. It's always because it's God. And this is just stuff that's happened on the planet. You know why? Because this, the peace of God, is supernatural. It's not of this world. Jesus said, I'm going to give you peace that's not of this world. It's from heaven. It's me. I'm giving you me. And it's a supernatural peace. Wow. The great thing about supernatural is it's not of this world. And so it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around it. But the good news is you don't have to wrap your brain around it. You just have to believe it. So I challenge you, put it on your mirror when you wake up in the morning, put it on your refrigerator, put it on your sun visor, put it on your spouse's forehead so you can see it every time you look at it. <laughs> Just kidding. A little. But anyway, um, you could do it while they're sleeping. <laughs> right, peace. And when you wake up, you look at them, you just smile. <laughs> Morning. What are you smiling for? It's a great day. It's a day full of peace. It's a day full of peace. Oh, I'm a funny guy. But anyway, we have the ability to live in peace, and it's a supernatural peace. So if you write it down and you get it into you renew your mind to say, I've got the peace of God on me. When all hell breaks loose, the dog bites you, poops on the floor. I mean, you, I, you have the peace of God. You have the peace of God. He says, I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. What he's saying is anything that happens to you on this planet, I have deprived it of its ability to harm you. Do you realize how big that is? How powerful that is? That you and I, Mary, we, ne we should never, ever let anybody harm us. Not one circumstance, not one person, not anybody on this planet has the ability to to harm us. Why? Because of the supernatural peace of God. He says, I took care of this. I took this. I didn't take the wasp away, but I did take the sting out of the wasp. I didn't take the wasp away, but I did take the sting out of it. It doesn't have the ability to harm you. If it's harming you, you have missed my peace. If something is harming you and me, you know, what our prayer is, God, just take this. Take this away from me. Cause my boss to be fired or lose his job. Cause my boss, okay, I'll, I'll try something nice, try to be transferred. I can't work for him anymore. Just And my spouse, you got to do something with them, God. I can't live like this any longer. You got to do something with them. Change them or you know what. You know where the problem is? The problem's not your boss. The problem's not your spouse. Your problem's not your best friend. Your problem's not your anything else. The problem is you on the inside have not had a revelation of the peace of God that has been deposited inside of you because nothing on this planet is more powerful than the peace of God. There is not one circumstance or one person that has the ability to harm you and rob you of your peace. You freely have given it. I know a lot of people, religious people, go, oh, that's just terrible. I don't believe that. Well, that's fine. You can live a peaceless life. Is that a right word? A life free from peace. I haven't arrived there, but I've left the port. I've left the port. What am I saying? I know that that's available for me, and it's in me. And I mean, here I am teaching peace. I'm being transparent. Here I am teaching peace, reading emotion books, reading stuff, studying the word. I mean, just doing all this. And last week, man, I just lost all my peace on my wife. I mean, I just, it just was, flew out the window. I chose that. So my point is this. And, and you know, and the first thought that came to my mind is this. I am studying emotions 
And I just lost my cool. I cannot believe this. Michael Davis, that's when I'm in trouble, just like my mom. I'd say the same thing. Michael Davis, you, what is wrong with you and everything? And I was just beating myself up. And the Lord, I just felt the presence of God just say, hey, you're not going to get to the right destination thinking like that, my friend. You better stop thinking like that. So my point is, you may this week, today, after hearing this message, be challenged in your emotional area. (laughs) And if you do, miss it. My point is this. God says, my love for you never does stop. My promises and blessings for you never stop. They are always yes and amen. They are not based upon whether or not I control my emotions. Now, God does want us to control our emotions. Why? Because of our horizontal relationship. Because of our work and because of our health. It does affect those areas. But as far as this goes, it doesn't affect that. I know a lot of religious people just get stuck right there with me hearing that. But just just listen. Because if you get a hold of it, it's the goodness and the faithfulness of God that will help you to receive in the area of controlling your emotions. Are you hearing me? But if you don't think God is on your side, if you don't think God is helping you, then honey, you think you're going to be able to have victory? I don't think so. That's why the devil wants you and I to think that when we mess up, God abandons us too. Well, you're really in a a world of trouble now because now you've ticked everybody off, your spouse and your boss and your best friends and your dog doesn't even like you anymore. Now you think God doesn't even like you. So you think you're going to have victory in your life? Listen, all those other things could be true, but you can rest assured that God will never leave you, that he'll never stop loving you, and he's always for you, and he's always going to help you. And if you have that, he can bring you out of any pit of hell. Come on now. Come on. God is for me. David said, if God is for us, who or what can be against us? That is a fact that you need to settle in your mind. You need to settle that in your mind. Man, I may have messed up, but boy, I'm thankful my father still has his loving arms around me. His peace is inside of me. He has the ability to just transform everything. What was meant for evil, he'll turn it around for my good. Everybody say, that's my God. So if you respond in a bad way, if you lose your cool today, the world is still turning and God is still loving you. Amen. All right. I believe this is going to help us so much. I'll summarize. Make sure that you know that you do have a choice when it comes to your emotions, that you do have the ability to control them and respond correctly. And if you are struggling, if you are struggling, you need to go to your Heavenly Father. Not just God, but your Heavenly Father. He's a Father. And talk to Him and say, God, you know what? Father, Daddy, I'm really struggling in my, I do lose my cool a lot. I do lose this. And I am, I get frustrated. I do have fear that just grips me. I have just, I mean, the mascara is running all the time. I'm just crying about everything. You can just be honest before your father. Say, I'm losing it. But I do know one thing. I can come to you. Cast all of my care upon you because you care about me. Those people who are watching online, you need to go and just talk to Father. Just say, I'm struggling in this area. But this is what you do. Don't just stop there and say, I'm struggling in this area. And it just seems hopeless. I keep messing up. This is what you need to do. You need to trust God when you talk to him about it that he is helping you and that he will help you. Amen? Amen. And so, if you know that you're getting help, what's the correct response? Thank him. I said, if you know you're getting help, you thank him. That's called faith. So, once you talk to God about your issues and that you're struggling or failing miserably, and you say, but I know that your word says that I can trust you and you will help me. So, I trust you that you're helping me and will help me. So, I'm going to say, thank you, Father. 
and you thank him. And you thank him and you thank him and you thank him. When you lose your cool the next day, you thank him that he's helping you. Because listen, more than likely, you'll have a, something to happen, you know, a flat tire or something, your alarm clock will get messed up. And so you will be able to say, you know what? The devil's working overtime to cause me to say, this is what Christians do, but it doesn't work for me. It does work for everybody. I don't care what planet you're on. You could be an astronaut on the moon, and it will work there. You need to believe this, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody online needs to believe. And so you thank him. Thank God. Thank God that you're being helped. No matter what's going on, you may be, this may be the worst week of your emotions. And every day you say, "Woo, God's helping me. And everybody else around and going, what? Lose your temper? Because you're doing really good. My mom told this joke one time. She said, there's this guy. This has nothing to do with the message. Uh, there was this guy who was driving like a maniac, and this other guy was following him. And uh, they finally got to their destination. That person got out, and they were going to eat at the restaurant. He says, man, you drive like an idiot. You're a maniac. What's the matter with you? He said, oh, you don't have to worry about it. I got Jesus in my car. Everything's okay. She said, he said, well, you better let him ride with me because you're going to kill you both. All right, it was, I can tie that in with the emotion somehow. But anyway, you get the drift. Some of y'all need to lighten up. But anyway, let's stand. Let's stand. Praise God. I'm going to pray for you this morning. Amen. But I want us all this week to know that you can control your emotions. But then I want you to realize and know this. You talk to God. And you trust him. And then you thank him that he can help you. I mean, it could be fear. It could be anger. Maybe you're just a worry ward. You know, a lot of people think, you know, especially in our older generation, well, if somebody's got to worry, it means that you care. No, it doesn't. It's going to destroy your health is what it's going to do. If your emotions are out of control, it's going to affect you physically. You can just take that to the bank. Even medical science says that. Are you hearing me? So this is vitally important that, and maybe you're a calm, cool, collective guy or woman. Maybe you are. But are you keeping everything on the inside and not letting anybody know about it? Because if you are, it, that'll destroy your health. And it'll affect how you respond as well. My point is this. You talk to God, trust Him, and then thank Him every day. If this is an issue, write things down to where you are thanking Him, Lord. Thank you that you're helping me in the area of worry. I can cast this upon you, talk to you about it, and I trust you. Trust God. If you're worried about your health, worried about your kids' health, worried about your family's health, trust God. Stop it. Just stop it. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for every person that's not only listening uh, here, but by watching online. I believe that you, are just opening up their heart to let them know how much you love them, that they will experience the goodness of God, that they will experience the God of all peace that passes our own understanding. Father, you are so powerful that the peace that you give us is supernatural. So I pray that you would just help us not only to experience it, but to understand and realize that that supernatural peace is helping us every day of our life. It's within us. Never will leave us. Never will forsake us. That peace is there. There's anyone here that you've never given your life to God, never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you come. My left and my right, these people will pray with you. But listen, if you're also struggling, maybe you are struggling in your emotions. If you just want to come and let these people agree with you, they can do that. If you're hurting in your physical body, God is a good father. He doesn't want you hurting today. Anything that you want to pray about, anything that you want to pray about, these people on my left and right, the way that we do it around here is that we'll dismiss you and you come up and these people will minister the very life of God to you, the goodness and the faithfulness of God to you. And you'll be changed. You'll walk out of here too. Please don't leave if you have a burden inside. Amen. Make sure that you get a hold of these messages if you missed last week you can watch it online let's get a hold of this god wants us to be helped in our emotions amen 
God bless you. If you need prayer, come on up. You're dismissed.